All right, the call I have today is for a rack system with a critical low liquid level alarm going off. So I'm already here. I'm gonna go in there and see what I can find out and take y'all with me. All right, so I made it up here to rack A. We've got eight compressors. Rack A. And this is R22. So you go to this computer here. I've already kind of gotten in here, but we look at the at the alarm, got the little alarm icon here. Press that. And then we'll go over to cleared. So here we have low liquid level, low liquid level. It's been really hot lately, so we've got a lot of high pressure. Scroll down one page. And then so we've got, this is yesterday morning. And then the day before yesterday evening. And then that's when these low liquid level alarms started occurring. So, below 10% liquid level in the receiver for 60 minutes. So, current value 14.6. So, I'm going to check out. I know it's low, otherwise, it wouldn't be doing that. But we've got a liquid line sight glass here. It was flashing a couple minutes ago. So, I've got to find a leak before I can uh, add refrigerant to it. So, I'm going to be leak checking this. Uh, this rack, where I go on the roof and check in there, and then when I find the leak, I will show you. Here we go, now it's flashing, now you can see it. All right, here we go, now it's flashing, now you can see that the liquid line is not full of liquid all the time, and it should be. All right, so this line right here, this is the oil separator, so this line is gonna have discharge pressure on it, and then I'm gonna find my suction pressure uh, somewhere else. Find it right here, suction pressure. Suction, liquid, discharge. Okay, so I got my gauges on. This is uh, going to be the low pressure circuit. Probably for the frozen stuff. Because we got 12 PSI, 10 PSI, something like that on the suction. 250 running liquid. So I like this little... Uh, these little, I love these because I can close this when I'm connected to liquid and then I can just put the refrigerant back into the system and then I don't get liquid everywhere and then it doesn't make a big mess and it doesn't burn me with frozen Freon. Okay, so I'm having to be hiding back behind this thing here. So I'll get back there and show you where I'm picking up at. Okay, so back here, my leak detector H10 picking up right around here somewhere so i gotta pinpoint the leak with my uh with bubbles kind of looks like it might be like right there it don't look too good so we're gonna bubble it but i'm gonna show you what the leak the h10 was doing so i like to have mine on manual mode yeah over here it takes a few minutes for it to settle down but yeah so see if I can there now you can maybe see it so so it starts to pick it up over here and then over here it's not so much All right, so again, got nothing there. I'm actually gonna just 
key up here. I get something up here. Yeah, so my leak is around here somewhere. I know that. I gotta find it though. As soon as I get the probe away from there. And as soon as I come back. And then as soon as I get away from it, on there, and as soon as I come back. So, I know I got a leak here. And I'm gonna find it. It looks like it might be, might be on the, on this thing right here. I guess let's see. All right, so I got this stuff here, which is okay, I guess. It ain't that great. Hmm. I try to find some bubbles. Okay, I know I gotta leak here somewhere. I've gotta, I gotta keep looking. I gotta search and search and search until I find it, because I know it's here. So I'm gonna look for it, and when I find it, I'll show you. Found it right there. Look at that. Yeah, that's one hell of a leak that some idiot didn't, didn't tighten up. Got another one over here on this one. So, I'll try it on that one. All right, so I got two leaks on, on two of these uh, solenoid, liquid line solenoid valves. On that one, and then also on this one. So, Two of them. Okay, so I got my big um, pipe wrench. Yeah, pipe wrench. And so, tighten these. I've got to pull these. Um, I got to pull these off. Okay, these solenoid valve coils. I got to lift them off of there. And I got to make sure that they don't energize while they're off. Like right now, it's not energized, but. If it did energize, it would it would overheat and burn the coil. So 
to make sure that don't happen, I'm gonna unwire it like I follow, so I can follow the wire back. That one. So, if I am not mistaken, it's gonna be these ones right here. So I'm gonna cut, looks like my, my orange wire. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut my orange wire and that'll stop the power and goes to that one. And I'm gonna do the same with this one over here. Okay, got both of them cut. That one and then it's that set. Yeah, so I'm ready to pull them off. Okay, so I got the two off that I need to tighten. Now the only tricky thing is how am I gonna get my pipe wrench down in there to get a good bite on it. I guess I'm gonna have to figure that out. Okay, I was able to get both of them turned some. I don't know if it was enough though to stop the meat. I guess we'll see. Alright, so I was able to get both of them turned a little bit. I'm not sure if it was enough to stop the leaks, but ah, uh, that one's still going a little bit. See that? Yeah. This one, not too sure, but that one I've got to tighten some more. Alright, well my battery's dead, so my camera won't give me the light. But I got both of them. Both of them are now leak free. So I've got now 150 pounds of refrigerant. And to get it up there to the rack, we've got to carry it up that ladder, maybe get a rope. Right? Wrong. We just need to pick a case, the left side of one of these cases on rack A, and clear out the bottom out of a couple of doors. It can be any circuit on A. So I've chosen this uh, pizza case right here because it has less inventory on it. I started over here with the vegetables but then there was like way too many vegetables in there so I moved down there. Okay took a little digging had to go to the one over here but I found one. Suction side. All right so before we start charging it so that we all understand where we are. We are going to charge rack A, which is a 350 pound charge. It's been alarming on low liquid level. Alarms, critical. Right now it's at, the receiver is at 10% capacity. We want to get it up to like 30 or 40, maybe 50, I don't really care. So we're going to start adding refrigerant to the circuit, which we can do anywhere. We're going to do it down at the case. Now then, you need to take me a couple hoses, and I'm going to take my valve stem remover. I'm going to go, I'm going to go add 50 pounds, two jugs, then we'll come back up here and check where our current value is. Okay, so preparing I am. I want this to go fast, so I'm gonna pull the valve stem out of the line and make sure I don't have any kind of restriction. Neither of my hoses, I'm gonna use a valve. So, okay, connected, got my valve stem out. Turn that on, lift it. Purge for liquid. There it is. I bet this goes quick. Got the first jug going in. It's not emptying as quick as I was hoping for, but it's definitely quicker than if I would have had the valve stem in it, or if I would have had the little. Uh, little thing that goes in here that pushes the valve stem, you know, that thing would be a lot slower if I did that. So, 
this is something that I would not have done a couple years ago. I would have carried all six of these up that ladder. It would have been difficult. It would have made me mad. I'd have been cussing. And all along, I could have just done this. That's what I hope some of y'all get from watching my videos. Ways to make it easier. One jug is in, second one's connected, open, purge for liquid. Oh, I gotta turn it upside down first. Now purge for liquid. There it is. And isn't that much easier than carrying these heavy things up the vertical stairway or getting your rope out? Saves you about 30 minutes or an hour right here. Okay, got two jugs in. I'm gonna go up here and check the liquid level and then wait about 15 minutes and then we're gonna check the liquid level again. All right, so after putting just 50 pounds in it, right now it's showing a 38.3% value. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, then we're definitely not gonna need all that refrigerant that I got. So I'm gonna let it run for about 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, and I'm gonna see where it's at again at that time. My um, side glass still isn't a full column of liquid, so I don't know why I would be saying it's 38% full. Suction pressure has gone up some, so maybe that's good. Well, it's been about 30, 45 minutes, and the liquid level is showing to be pretty good. So, I'm not going to add any more. I'm just gonna do the 50 pounds. And uh, that's gonna be it for this one. So, we fixed the leak, two leaks. Recharged it. Showed you a little shortcut to recharging it. So you don't have to carry the refrigerant up here. Uh, Hope you learned something good from this. Thanks for watching.